Okay, so it's about 3.34 p.m. on September the 27th. And I'm looking at here BC's new racist incident helpline. It says here that we're ready to help. Support is here. Free, confidential, trauma-informed. Well, since I'm a woman who... Um, demands to live in the private, and since uh, that is not afforded to me, we're going to have to make sure that this call is recorded and published, because pretty obviously there's a problem, and the problem is due to my race, if my ethnic identity. That's why there's a problem. Duty as executor, 
and power of attorney of a property in the district of Saanich. Well, that was stolen from me by an act of fraud on the court in March of 2020. Now, I attended my home after I had provided ample um, information to the persons who are in unlawful possession of that home. I proved my claim. I was never violent. I was. I never disturbed the peace. That's just not who I am as a woman. And I had notified basically everybody in the district of Saanich, including the mayor, including the police chief. And immediately upon arriving to do my job of removing the trespassers from my home, I was mobbed by members of the Saanich Police Department. There was at least six vehicles and at least a dozen or more persons who who then informed me that I'm charged with criminal harassment, which, I mean, I can't be criminally harassing anybody. I'm in my lawful duty. I've been provided a job by my spouse who left a will, he left a last will and testament that gifted me our home. And that home was stolen by an act of fraud on the court. So no one will help me. No one will believe me. I did everything in my power to stop the theft of my home. And instead, I faced more violence. And so they kept commanding me to get out of my automobile. But I know that they're there to rob my automobile. I also know if I get out, I'm consenting to violence against myself, which I can't do. Like an error not resisted is then approved. So I I can't actually get out because, but they've boxed me in. They've boxed me in and they've surrounded me and they're touching my automobile and they're harassing me and they're threatening me and they're intimidating me. And I'm literally like terrified for my life. And so I tried everything in my power to de-escalate the situation because the last thing that I need or want is for my neighbors, my neighbors since January of 2003, to have their peace disturbed because everybody has the right to live in peace, especially when they're in their homes. So I tried everything in my power to de-escalate a situation that they are obviously there to escalate into a level of violence and disturbing of the peace. So I can't get out. Like, I just can't. And so all of a sudden, there are two armed and dangerous persons with deadly weapons, and they cave in two of my windows of the last item of security that I had left, which was my little automobile that I bought brand new. Mm. I promised you I wouldn't cry. Sorry, okay. Give me a sec. It sounds very traumatizing. It was awful. It was the worst thing. Yeah. They caved. I was inside of her and they caved two of her windows in her. And the glass mm-hmm. flew all over me, and then they yanked me out of my security, and it got worse from there. <laughs> it was tortured for 21 hours, and in Canada, the persons acting as the police are the only persons who can lay criminal charges like a victim in Canada has absolutely no ability to lay criminal charges. We don't have that right here. Mm -hmm. So they laid in order to incite hatred against me so they could keep me from going home. They've laid two false charges in order to incite hatred against me. And then, I mean, it's just gotten worse from there because that was on August the 30th. (laughs) I heard lies from somebody acting as crowd counsel and the only place that this person could have heard these lies was from the persons acting as the police. They're again making false statements to incite hatred against me. To incite hatred against my good conduct and my good character. And so I'm being threatened with jail if I don't consent to these conditions. But these conditions They're keeping me from doing my job as the trustee and the power of attorney of that piece of land. And so, of course, I I mean, I I have no choice. Like, I have absolutely no choice afforded to me at that time because they're going to put me in jail. And so I have to. Like, I'm under duress.
as I'm being threatened, I'm being harassed by these persons acting as the court. And I'm commanded to go back into court on September the 5th. This is on August the 30th. So on September the 4th, I write up a document explaining to this Crown Council person that these are the lawful reasons why I will not be partaking in what is called legally a malicious prosecution. That's what's happening to me. This has happened to me before when I've been robbed of my property. And so I let this individual know. I contact the right group to let this individual know that I can't. Like I can't because of my race, because of my ethnic identity, I can't involve myself in your hate crime because now you're wasting my time. Now you're keep you're making me eat and abet crime against myself and my family and I can't partake in what you're doing. So this person acting as Crown Counsel refuses to respect my culture and goes ahead and issues a warrant for my arrest and now for weeks, every single week, I have been bombarded with armed and dangerous individuals uh, calling me, texting me, and coming to my precarious location to cause me to be in literal fear for my life. The last time they were here at the door was last Friday. And there was something spoken to me about they're going to put me in an institution. They want to, I believe, my understanding of what their plan is for me is to section me under the Mental Health Act, have me detained, and have me involuntarily submitted to, um, well, to, to services that I could never be a part of because my culture and my race don't, I mean, we're not, we, we would never be helped by, you know, s- psychological or psychiatric types of treatments. We, 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 we don't need that kind of help. Like, I'm not a danger to myself. I'm not a danger to anyone. I have never harmed anyone. I've never harmed myself. There's no proof that I ever have anywhere. But these individuals, in order to shut me up and shut me down, have now, because I'm fighting for my rights, because I'm not partaking in their evil against me and my family, I literally am shaking all day, every day. And it doesn't matter who I reach out to, they don't want to help me at all. Like the Victoria Police Department should be involved in this and should be helping me. They have refused for years to serve me. The BC RCMP hate crime team, they should be investigating all of this and putting a stop to the criminal harassment that I'm receiving from persons acting as a Sandwich Police Department who have a history of causing myself and my family harm by refusing to listen or serve us. So it doesn't matter where I reach out to, I just got off the phone with the Law Society of British Columbia asking for an intake officer to listen to me about the conduct of this Crown Council who now has malicious plans Well, if they detain me and section me under the Mental Health Act, you have absolutely no rights. And they will do to you whatever they want to, whenever they want to. And no one, no one is allowed to be involved in that, in that process. And so this is why, like, I'm not eating, I'm not sleeping, I can't get anybody to listen or to help me. I have, I have ample depositions and proof that that is my home. It has been stolen by an act of fraud on the court. I need someone to listen. I need someone to help. But instead of being helped and listened to, there's an active agenda. I'm not even kidding you. There's an active agenda to shut me up by by ending my life, by detaining me and putting me in an institution that I don't belong in because, like I say... I'm not a danger to myself. I'm not a danger to anyone else. I need help. I need to be listened to. And individuals who need to be investigated and charged with the crimes, that I'm not the criminal here. I'm the innocent woman trying to get someone to listen. And you're basically my last resource because I've gone everywhere and no one will help me. It's just always violence. And my little car that I had, that was the last thing I had left. I now have no way to go to food banks because when they stole my home, the solicitors and the benchers, they also stole all the money. 
and they've left me with no money at all. Like, I have no way to keep a roof over my head. I have no way to pay for the storage locker fee. And this has been going on now for close to five years. And this is all due to my race, and this is all due to my ethnic identity, and also I'm a widow, and so that makes me even more vulnerable to these these kinds of attacks and, and violence because there's absolutely no need for these individuals acting as Sanders Police Department to mob me that way, to escalate a situation that I was I wasn't there to do anything harmful to anybody. I was just doing my duty. And they all knew that if they towed my automobile, that I have no money to get her back. They also know that I have no money to get her fixed. They caved in two of her windows. I mean, I mean, she's she's completely destroyed. I mean, that's the crime of malice. Like they they were there with a criminal mind to commit criminal acts, and then because I couldn't aid and abet what they wanted to do to me, then I got charged with another count. It's called. I'll read it to you. It's got, I got it right here. I'm charged with willfully resisting or obstructing a peace officer. But, I mean, you've, you've left me no options here. Like, I can't because you, you're going to rob me of, of the last thing I have left. My spouse left me an automobile in his will. They stole that, too, when they came for my home. So I, I don't even know, like, I tried to call the RCMP last week. They refused to help me. They put me through to the the, 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 the the BC police complaints persons, but I've already complained to them, and I explained to those persons, if I just made it worse for myself by filing a complaint, because now there's going to be retaliation, and that's exactly what's happened. Retaliation of them coming here, and what they're doing when they come to the door is they're disturbing the peace of everybody in the building, including the front desk people because they have to check themselves in. I can't even go out and get food. I shake every day, all day. Not eating, not sleeping. I'm sick to my stomach because I don't know how to get this stopped. I, I don't even know where, where to go because all the places that are supposed to help you absolutely refuse to help you. About twice a week, a mortgage-free house is being stolen in Canada. And my home is, is wrapped up in all of that corruption. And once they steal the house from you, they don't want to give the house back to you. I mean, I did all this research because what happens to you when this is happening to you is you're, it's like you, you feel like you're going crazy. So I, I had to research all of this because am I the only one that this is happening to? No, this is happening all the time. And then the criminals are protected, but the innocent people who've been robbed are, are absolute, well, it's, it's, I'm being terrorized, right? It's an act of terror. They're terrorizing me, intimidating me, uttering threats. So now what happens when this Crown Council listens to these police persons who are lying about me and lying about what's happening? Once those statements become public, that's a crime. Under Section 319 of the Criminal Code of Canada, these statements, public statements, are now willfully promoting hatred against me. And that's why I don't even know what to do anymore. Like, I, 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 don't, I don't even know where to go. And you're the only folks that I can think of. Because this is all based on, like, racial hatred. I mean, I know it. I mean, there's no other reason for them to treat me like this other than because of my ethnic origin and my race. And, of course, we have my gender. And there are statistics um, that the government of Canada has collected that women don't feel safe. Like, we don't feel safe anywhere. We don't feel safe in our communities. We don't feel safe going out, which is why I didn't want them to rob my little car because like, I don't feel safe taking public transit. Like, I don't feel safe walking around. And I don't even know. Yeah. Do you think it'd be helpful to have an advocate in this situation that would provide you a third party that you could, you know, bring with you to these situations where you feel like everybody's kind of piling it up against you? I wouldn't even know where to go for somebody like that. Like, who would even be willing to, like... Yeah, I can, I can look on my database here. Um, so you mentioned that you're in Saanich, that's right? Yeah. Okay. And did you want to look at culturally specific supports? Well, there seems to be a problem.
problem with like I feel like I'm being racially segregated. Like I feel like there's no knowledge about my culture, and so it, it, this is like a level of discrimination. It, there's no there's no cultural sensitivity towards me because well, you know where I come from. You mean you just wouldn't go out of your way to cause your neighbor harm like this? Like you wouldn't lie about your neighbor? You wouldn't you know you wouldn't tell them that you're gonna put them in an institution because they're telling the truth and you need to shut them up and so you're going to drug them basically to death. Yeah. That's the plan. That's it's the plan they really have for me. the way that you've been mistreated. I don't know what to do. I don't know where to go. I'm so tired. I basically Okay, so it sounds move. like advocacy services might be relevant. Do you think so? <laughs> it might provide an opportunity for you not to feel so alone in everything that you're dealing with right now. And it sounds like you've gone through kind of the normal routes of filing a complaint against the Sandwich Police. Um, but I can also see what else is in your area, but I just need to know a little bit more about what kind of resources you're looking for, and I can do the work of finding them, and I'll go through them with you. Oh, no. I'm so sorry, sweetheart. That seems like a really complicated question. You were asking me what I need, like, I need help. Okay. Um, I just want to make sure that I I find the right support for you. So, um, would you would you like to look at mental health resources, like counseling resources, or someone that you can talk to about what's going on? Well, that part I'm solid. Like I understand what's happening okay. to me, and I understand why it's happening to me. But like I need like federal government employees because they would be the ones who investigate municipal public servants and their conduct in this particular situation. And like I say, when I tried to reach out to the West Shore Beast, the, the RCMP, they didn't, like they had no idea what to do. Like they put me over to the BC Police Complaints Commission, but I was already there. Like you don't need me to put me back to where I already was. Like I need your federal government. Federal government has to investigate provincial and municipal corruption if that's what's going on here and that's what's happening to me and so I don't even know how to get a hold of like BC RCMP has a hate crime unit this is basically what I'm facing here like this is a hate crime I've been robbed I've been mobbed now I've got a malicious prosecution happening to the point where I'm in fear for my life and you're right, like, I don't really have anybody, like, I can't really meet with anybody face-to-face -face because I'm terrified of being violently assaulted or, do, do you know what I mean, like, because it just happened, and so now I'm terrified. Mm hmm Okay, so have you filed the, um, your experience as a hate crime with the RCMP? No, I wouldn't even know how to do that. Like, I don't know who do you call, like, who would be taking that type of information from me because the West Shore RCMP didn't seem interested. So, yeah, typically it would be through either calling the non-emergency police line or going in person, but if you aren't comfortable going there, I can find a victim services worker for you. Yes, please. Okay, so victim services, let me see here okay so i'll look for victim services resources and would you like any other resources like legal resources um or we kind of talked a little bit about advocacy so when you say advocacy could you help me please understand like what exactly we are you're, you're talking about because i'm not quite sure what you mean when you say that mm -hmm, for sure so an advocate is somebody that can follow up with systems that you feel are not supporting your claims or you know if you're filing a police report and no action is coming from it an advocate can follow up and say hey why isn't this you know resulting in any actual action here um and it also is just like a third party that can support you through what it is you're going through whether it be with the police whether it be with town council and they can just be an advocate for you kind of empowering you in the situation so you're not alone Oh, well, that sounds lovely. That sounds helpful. Okay. So I'll look for victim services resources and advocates in your area. 
Um, and once I have a list of resources, I'll go through them with you. How does that sound? Yeah, that's great. I have a pen and a paper right here, so I'm not holding you up because I'm sure other people will need to talk to you. Oh, no worries. You're, you're, you know, this is a space for anyone, so I'm happy you called in. So I'll just need to put you on hold for just a few minutes while I look up those resources to make sure that I'm finding the best resources for you, and then I'll take you off hold, and then we'll go through them. Thank you. Of course. Okay, I'll talk to you in a few minutes. Okay. So you realize every time I do this, it's more trauma, right? Traumatizing. Having to tell somebody else what's going on. Seems lovely. Yeah, one thing I'm not is an asshole, eh? Have you picked that up yet about me, that I'm not an asshole? If you treat me with respect, to be treated with respect, but if you disrespect me, it's on. Oh, it's on like Donkey Kong. Did you hear that? Mayor of Saanich? Chief of Saanich Police, did you hear that? So I didn't mention names. Training and testing. She's being trained and tested for something, obviously. Got nothing left. My good conduct and my good character. I think I've heard from the chief of Sam's police. Oh, we sent a letter, though. We sent a letter to her. music is that? Are you listening to that music? It's like a 1970 porn background music.
This call is being recorded for quality assurance and training purposes. Oh, uh, something else I have left, my sense of humor. Family got a sense of humor. Have to when you're dealing with the sadistic spawn. Laughing, knowing that their day is coming. Oh boy, okay, so we just reached 31 minutes of this. Yes, yeah, because we all know I'm recording. Gotta record. Gotta create a testimony. Testimony of what life is like for the peculiar people. The hated, the targeted the disrespected just because of who you are and who sent you here you imagine well you don't need to imagine I've given you a front row seat to what it's like to be persecuted because you belong to an identifiable group known as the peculiar people welcome to my world Yeah, the psychiatry and the psychology are not for my people because it's void of wisdom and understanding and truth. They just, they just spin on stupid. They just talk in circles. Those who are trained professionals in those fictions. We can't have you sitting here listening to nothing. You can listen to me. The woman that's hated by the world. Now we got a murder plan going on. We're gonna murder her. We're gonna detain her, drug her to death. That'll shut her up. You know, they learned that lesson with Jesus, didn't they? They tried the same thing with my brother, and look what happened. Hi, I'm back. Nice try. Heaven help us, what is going on here? Yes, we're holding. We've been holding for almost eight minutes. Thank <laughs> you.
call is important to us. You're back, thank gosh. I was worried. Oh, so sorry. <laughs> so sorry. It took a little bit longer than I expected, but um, I did put together a list of resources that I believe would be helpful. Wonderful. I got my pen and my paper right here. Okay, perfect. So I first want to just check because some of these resources depend on your age. So I just want to double check that the age that you put in 51 is your true age. I arrived here in 1973, yes. option to have just in case somebody might have a hard time writing things down. That's good to know. I'm okay writing it down, but I really appreciate you saying that because I'm more of a texter than a talker, to be honest with you. I hear you. I hear you. Phone calls give me okay. anxiety. I uh, you know. For most people nowadays, that's true, yeah. Isn't that awful? What, okay. What, what have we done to ourselves? I know. <laughs> okay, so I have another resource here for victim services. Organization called Seniors First BC. So, uh, oh, actually, you know what? It is the same one. So ignore that. Okay. Um, they're just a specific resource listing for their victim services program. But yep. that original number that I gave you, um, they'll be able to. 
were able to uh, connect you with their goods and services department through that. So, okay, so there's that one. Um, I also wanted to share another line that uh, is part of our organization at United Way BC. Um, they're called Victim Link, and they're for victims of crime. So they're similar to us, but they're a little bit more specialized. So they have a little bit more um, specialized uh, resources. Okay. Um, so I just thought I'd bring it up in case. Um, so, you know, so you have another resource to contact to, to see what's out there. So Victim Link's number yep. is 1-800-563-1111. Okay. Yep. 0-8-0-8. 1-800-563-0-8-0-8. And they also, um, you can text them or you can phone them. So. Oh, wow, that's nice. More of a texter. So, yeah, that's kind of a nice option to oh, have. Oh, you're not kidding, especially for me. Yes, thank you. So, I, I'm an empath. I'm a sensitive. I have a really weird personality type, so this is kind of why. I'm not just a weirdo. I, there's actually a reason why I'm like this. I've had to figure out who I am over the years because I've had such a hard time my whole life. So I do, I can actually explain what's happening to me and why and who I am and what I am. So, yes, that's why that's so nice that you told me that that's, you can text that number and uh, contact yourself with someone at that service. For sure. Um, and then the last resource that I have that I think would be helpful is actually the BC office of the Ombudsperson. Have you heard of them before? Oh, I certainly have, and they've never been a help to me ever, and I have contacted them okay. repeatedly about matters in my life, and they're just, yeah, no, they're not helpful at all. Yeah, ignore that one then. Okay. Um, and then... <laughs> claims that there's a BC hate crime unit run by the RCMP. Do you have a number for them or a some way for me to get a hold of that? Because this is a specific situation. Do you know what I mean? Like it is a hate crime. I've experienced a hate crime and it's by, it's by municipal persons. So that would have to mm-hmm. be okay. a, like a federal government investigation because they're the only ones who could investigate this level of corruption happening. Yes, I understand. So I do have a number and an email here. Okay. You can let me know uh, if you want either or both. You have a number? A number and an email. Okay, well, give me the number first, please. And this is for the BCRCMP. Yes, it's the BC Hate Crime Team through the RCMP. Yep. Okay, so their number is 1-855. Yes. 462. Yep. Five seven three three. One eight five five four six two five seven three three. That's correct. Okay. Okay. And do you also want their email, or do you just want the number? Oh gosh, you know something's happening to me here, and I need to end this. Okay. Sorry, sweetheart. Are you still there, honey? Oh, hi. Um, I don't think that's who you're meaning to speak to. I'm I'm help <laughs> I've just ended a call with somebody, and I was trying to get help from somebody else. I didn't understand what I was doing. Okay. I'm so sorry. I'm from the Law Society calling. Right. This Victoria. This is Victoria, yes. And you're a lawyer? No, I was having um, a problem with somebody who was acting in that role, and that's why I was calling, because there's... There's something going on here that's not right, and so I was just on the phone with um, the race 
the racism hotline folks here in BC who are going through some resources for me, and I, I've never had to do that before where there's an incoming call and trying to, and I've picked the wrong. So I've ended that call not meaning to, but now you're on the phone, and so. Okay, you just left a voicemail about the loss of body and you were fearing for your life. So we just called you back. But yes, please. I'm not quite sure how we can help you. If you're fearing for your life, you should be calling 911, not the law society. Um, well, it, because you know, have... it's due to the conduct of somebody who works, you know, they would be a member of your society. That's why oh, I was... I totally, totally understand. But if you're actually physically fearing for your life from a lawyer or anybody else, you call 911, right? And we'll deal with the complaint in Police Department, in retaliation, have decided to make some false statements um, to Crown Counsel, and of course, Crown Counsel then made those false statements onto the record. And those false statements against me would be to incite hatred against me. And so I was forced into a situation because I was being threatened with jail. And so what I did was, this was on August the 30th, and I do have the file number here if that's helpful for you. I don't know if you... If you um, come, no, because if you are going to put a complaint into writing, you can then send that to us, so we'll have it. So because I understand my, my rights, and I do usually advocate for myself, I had provided information to Victoria, the Victoria Crown through an email on September the 4th, that I wouldn't be present on September the 5th, and these were the lawful reasons why. I provided lawful reasons of why I wouldn't be partaking in this malicious prosecution. And so then this uh, individual, Laura Wheeler, goes ahead and issues a warrant for my arrest after I had been, like, crystal clear about, you know, you've, you've heard false statements from persons acting as Sanish police, and now you have then spoken those false statements onto the record. And so now it's no longer a private conversation. So if you never met me, Laura Wheatler, and you know nothing about my life or my situation, for you then to, you know, threaten me with jail to keep me off of my stolen property, you don't have criminal mind, you don't have criminal act. What you're doing is you're wasting the court's time, you're wasting the taxpayer dollar. You've got, you've actually got criminals here in the province of British Columbia. You need to go after those folks and not me. So instead of being respectful of my culture and my request to cease and desist, I now have been relentlessly attacked and terrorized by members of the Senate Police Department. And my understanding is there's some type of an order to have me detained and put me in an institution, like a psychiatric type of a hold under the Mental Health Act, but that would violate my cultural rights, because in my culture we wouldn't be partaking in psychiatric or psychological services because they are harmful to, to my people. And can I ask your permission as to what your culture is? Yes, well... I mean, you've heard of us. We are Moses, Jeremiah, Ezekiel, John the Baptist, Jesus. We are the hated ones, and we are known as the peculiar people. No, I'm sorry, I haven't heard of you, but um, I can I can understand your concern that you're. I, I'm just not sure what the Law Society complaint process can do for you. If you do want to put a complaint in that you feel a lawyer has done something wrong, you'll it. It should be in writing, and we would take a look at it. Um, it sounds like to me that um, there's a Crown prosecutor that is taking steps that you strongly disagree with, and I understand that and respect that. It does have to be in writing, and we will look at it and respond to you if it is within our jurisdiction and something that raises an unethical 
concern, a professional conduct concern about the lawyer involved. What we do not get involved with is charge approval or the Crown um, without any evidence of bad faith of doing their job as any other lawyer doing their job. We wouldn't get involved uh, in a court case, for example. But we would absolutely look at any professional conduct concerns. Um, as I said, we called you back because you had indicated you feared for your life and we're seeing if you were having an emergent situation with, with a lawyer, and I can hear you and understand you. Um, if you need some access to our website, that's how you can file a complaint. Is there anything else that we can help you with today? No, I just needed to make sure that you are aware of the situation and that there is a problem and that um, speaking statements in the public to incite hatred against any identifiable group is actually a criminal code of Canada offense and that is what has occurred. Right, but we're not the, we don't, um, the law society complaint process doesn't um, charge people criminally. We never have. Even if a lawyer is charged criminally, we await for the outcome of that sometimes. Um, and it's not up for us to determine whether or not conduct is criminal. It's up for us to determine whether or not something's professional misconduct. And if a lawyer has taken steps in whatever duty they're carrying out, which is against an opposing party, that in and of itself is not criminal conduct. Um, that is the adversarial nature of the legal system that we're in. So it may be that you have larger concerns about the administration of justice issue, which would go to the Attorney General. But as I said before, the purpose of the phones isn't to give people a yes or no on complaints. It's to um, guide them if they want to make a complaint, guide them to our website, um, uh, show them where the complaint form is and things like that. And we're happy to do that for you if you have a complaint. But it's not up to me to decide whether or not it is criminal, whether or not charges should be laid or anything like that. Um, but uh, you are able to make a written complaint and we would absolutely look at it. Well, I've done that before, and it's never gotten me anywhere. It's been a waste of my time and a waste of my energy because the truth is you actually don't discipline any of your members. That's the truth. Well, if you looked at our tribunal website, we actually do have quite a few members that we call the white teeth that we have discipline, so I can guide you to that. But, again, the purpose of the call is to engage in that type of rhetoric. It's really to try and assist people. So you're aware that there's a private prosecution process here in British Columbia because everyone um, has again, access to our, justice. Our, our, our phone call, our complaint line isn't to get into this discourse with you about private prosecution. We assist people in making complaints about lawyers. That's really the limited role we have here. I cannot assist you with private prosecution or whether or not I'm aware of that. Oh, no, I wasn't, I wasn't I wasn't asking you to help me. I was just wondering if you are aware that that is I, available to someone like myself who is... Being I cannot harmed. say that I'm aware. I cannot say that I'm aware of that. No. Oh. Okay. Is there anything else on law society complaint process can help you with? Well, now you're aware that there's a problem here, and so my people wouldn't be involved in an adversarial type situation because that disturbs our peace. I'm really, I'm really sorry. You're you're talking about things um, that I just cannot assist you with. Really. So that's then not providing culturally respectful services to my identifiable group of people. Well, we've already offered that you can make a complaint in writing as per our process, and we will look at it. Um, but the calls is really to help people, and just to, it's not to get into this kind of discourse. I can appreciate you're trying to tell me something, um, but again, the purpose of the calls is really to help people make a complaint, and I've already tried to help you with that and welcome your complaint if you want to make one. Whether or not you want to, that's your choice and your decision. Right, the go around. I get you. Okay, sounds good. Thank you. Okay, have a good weekend. Thank you. Bye bye. Okay, well that was horrible because I ended a call that I didn't mean to end. And uh, did you hear that? The run around, the go around in a circle. Can you imagine? Anyway, I got I got enough numbers from the BCR from the uh, the racist incident helpline. So just more I can go around in a circle, right? <laughs> okay. So you got a load of that conversation, right? That last one I just had there. So I'm trying to explain bad faith is happening. 
an adversarial adversarial system. Well, an adversarial system is set up by uh, infantile, imbecilic ignorance and uh, their system was created by and is run by arrogant, immoral abominations who do not have a fucking clue what peace is. Because the opposite of peace is fucking adversarial, right? So Google search BC Law Society is corrupt and see what you come up with. You should know it's corrupt. I've got letters from them where they are literally aiding and abetting hate crimes against me and my family, or these persons who are pretending to be this. It's a private society, by the way. It's a private society with private members who are acting in public service roles. All right, so these, uh, these creatures of the crown get together with these fucking pathetic... Uh, Poison is pukes acting as the police. And they can literally fucking destroy families, destroy lives, kidnap children and sell them. Steal homes and automobiles that they have no fucking business even fucking touching. And then keep all the money. They have all these fictional fucking circus clown fucking roles that they call themselves, like policy enforcement and attorney general and fucking crown counsel and fucking bencher. And it's all absolute fucking Babylonian beast bullshit. Oh yes, the Satan. (laughs) Satan has sired spawn. Satan has sired spawn that are literal snakes and scorpions. That's who I'm dealing with. Snakes aren't straight. Scorpions are fucking poisonous. That's who I'm dealing with. That's who kidnapped my son. That's who sold my son at eight years old. And an act of fraud on the court. Now the Babylonian beast bankers in there. Satan aspired spawn have come for my home. You just fucking go around in the circle, right? It's the fear, it's the filthy fascist, Ferris warped wheel of the, well, of those with no hope and no future. I mean, this is. Did you hear that? Did you hear that? That that one who answered the phone from the BC Law Society has never heard of Jesus, or Moses, or John the Baptist. Yet I can fucking almost guarantee it celebrates Christmas and Easter. So right there, you can determine that that one there is, you know, perpetually dishonest. It wouldn't be of the truth. So that's what's happening here. This is cultural segregation. This is cultural discrimination. I know how many hours have I wasted doing all of this today, and it's really gotten me nowhere. And now I find out this afternoon that they've sent a letter. Yeah, we've sent a letter. Have you sent a letter? Do you think I want to hear anything a child of the devil, sorry, one of Satan's spawn has to say? Or do you have nothing intelligent to say? You have nothing intelligent to add at any time for any reason. The no hope and the no futures. That's who I'm dealing with. Right. So, Chief of Police here in the District of Sandwich, have you called ICBC and found out where my stolen automobile is? Well, that wouldn't be my job. It would be your job. Why am I, what am I going to do your job for you? So, apparently, Sandwich Police has a fraud department. And uh, Del Manic was provided a, a package of information in December of 2019 that my home was being stolen by an act of fraud and did nothing about it. 
So who's really the problem around here? Because it certainly isn't me. All right, the Babylonian beasts of Belial. The unprofessional, untrained, useless public servants and their public fucking services. This is why we're private people. The peculiar people are a private people. And we don't involve ourselves in cursed commerce. And that's all the crown is about. And all their little public servant fucking warped worker Babylonian bees. So 